the tenth month when the servant is trying to be a nuqt and keep the reality of their nuqt of being nothing that Ramadan had washed them and dressed them and blessed them and then Allah wanting to dress them from these realities under Almani the one whom prevents harm, under the key and the immense reality of Ni'matullah that Allah wants to complete his ni'mat and this is the name of Sayyidina Muhammad for Shawwal is Ni'matullah. Means then the love of Sayyidina Muhammad deposited into the servant's soul and that's their key into this Divine the Presence to be dressed and to be blessed, to be brought down to nothing by Ramadan and Subhana Mandul Arshi Amma Yasifoon. Glory be to the owner of the throne above all else that's attributed to him. Means this is when the people of the mulk will be annihilated and brought to the owner of Malakut, owner to Sahib al Arsh, that Allah owns the, the might and the majesty. But the throne is for Sayyidina Muhammad Allah doesn't need a chair to establish his kingdom, the, the chair is for the representative and Allah is seated upon the holy heart of Sayyidina Muhammad It's an immense authority, immense reality. That's why in that ocean of immense realities the feeling of nothingness opens for shahwal. No feeling of tajalli, no feeling of, of, of any connection because the one whom is outside that reality feels all of the tajallis, all of the energies, all of these blessings. When Allah opens the hijab of Shawan as if to throw the servant's soul into an ocean of immense power in which you no longer feel yourself of anything which is the correct feeling that you don't feel separate from the ocean but if they cast you into the ocean who could feel anything in Allah's oceans of might and majesty. That the servant is drawing near to the presence of the arsh and all authority, all power, all realities then one must know then shaitan knows that reality. Shaitan is here for beginning of time to the end of time and shayateen they don't die. Every time they take a state of death, from that death they come back into life, they have a perpetual existence. So they know the game, they know exactly what tajallis are coming, they know what exactly the servant is going to be experiencing, hence the month of immense satanic attacks. We said before this life of ours and this way of marifa, it's like you have the ball and you're running down the field for some reason. Most people forget and think that they got the ball and they're going to make touchdown. Nobody coming after you, <laughs> just the crowds in the audience cheering for you, it's wrong. This game is severe, it's immense and shaitan sees you got a ball. And he's coming after you and every step he's going to trip you and, and flip you and he's going to send all his team to come against the servant. That's why so many difficulties in this month, that's why so many agitations and aggravations that people are lending themselves to satanic attack, to anger, to qadab and why because every time they're getting angry and lending themselves to that as if shaitan took away the prize, took away the reality. It's like immense, you filled yourself with light. For us always everything is by analogy because this reality that is witness is impossible to put to words. So people don't have a reference and an understanding, so as a reference for us to understand an analogy, imagine you're filled with these immense lights and they're so subtle like a… Uh, what's the one that you blow the bubbles with the soap? You have the little game as a child and you, you blow this bubble and it go but it's so latif, 
it's so fragile this bubble all around us of these lights and all shaitan's interested in is come and poke it. And he pokes it, poke it, poke it as if all the light is, is and all these dressings and all of these blessings he's wishing to pull from the servant and make them to enter into a state of anger and qadab and forget these dressings that Allah has, has dressed upon us, the one whom is the preventer of harm wants to give an immense dress upon the servant, he sends the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's ni'matullah, Sayyidina ni'matullah. These names from Dalal al-Khirat are immense keys of realities. So when you say, I want ni'matullah, I want ni'matullah, a Prophet's name is Ni'matullah, very easy, don't have to make it complicated. Anyone wants Ni'matullah, that's Sayyidina Ni'matullah, that Prophet to come and to dress and to bless and to complete Allah's Ni'mat and blessings upon our soul to reach our realities. And we pray that Allah dress us and bless us from these realities and grant us to receive the tajallis and to rise, rise and don't be a mouse in the hands of a cat that keep throwing you with his nails back and forth and playing with the servant, only Allah are watching that don't be a part of the satanic game, don't let him play with you. At one point in your life you stand up, rise up and say, the subject doesn't matter, the reasons don't matter, Allah's testing me to reach to my realities. And that shaitan is playing with me and I see how shaitan is playing and the servant takes a path of silence, controls their qada, does all of their practices to control their anger, control their emotions so that to pass their tests. Otherwise you can do this for 90 years of life and have achieved nothing. Every time you get a dress shaitan pulls it away, every time you take a dress and pull it away until the last breath in which you enter into the grave exhausted thinking you achieved nothing because shaitan was taking all these blessings away only until the grave for Allah to show the servant what they truly have been dressed with and blessed with. But that's a, a difficult sad life for a servant who feels nothing from what their practices were, doesn't feel the immense grace and the immense blessings. For the one whom achieves ni'matullah, Allah becomes their hearing, Allah becomes their seeing, Allah become the hands in which they touch, the feet in which they move, the breath in which they breathe. All these dresses and realities that Allah wants to bestow upon the servant. InshaAllah Allah dress us and bless us from these immense realities and alhamdulillah taking a life of service, taking a life of khidmat, taking a life of immense realities. We posted from Mawlana Shaykh's post that somebody had reposted that to in times of difficulty and affliction that as soon as we entered into Islam it's an immense battle against shaitan, that this is a satanic kingdom and we hope that through all the teachings you've been notified that it's a satanic kingdom. You didn't land on paradise, Allah shot you from the heavens, brought you onto this earth and you landed onto a satanic kingdom. And your life is about how to survive and traverse the satanic kingdom to reach back towards the heavenly kingdom and the reality in which you were from and which we came from that reality. Our life is how to achieve and to return back to that reality that Allah sent us from. That requires all these teachings, all these understandings and all these practices to reach to that blessing, to reach to those dressings. As soon as we accepted our Islam and took our path of not standing in the satanic kingdom then reminding and remembering ourselves, no, no I'm from the heavenly kingdom and that's why the heavenly kingdom is Islam, the deen of Allah is Islam. 
Anyone want to think, what is the heavenly kingdom coming to earth? The heavenly kingdom of Allah is Islam and as soon as the servant accepts Islam, accepts the way of, of taslim and submission, it's a direct fight with shaitan because his kingdom is definitely not Islam. His kingdom is alcohol, forbidden foods, haram foods, haram activities, everything that is forbidden and not allowed by Allah is the satanic kingdom. So anyone wants to know what kingdom is where, anything forbidden is from the satanic kingdom. And the heavenly kingdom of Islam that Sayyidina Muhammad is the sultan of that reality. As soon as the servant took the path of Islam, that I took this path of tasawwuf and taskiyah and purification, they must be prepared for a bulletproof dress. <laughs> They came and they asked that, I, I say, Ya Rasul Kareem, I'm accepting the deen, what now to prepare? He said, prepare yourself for immense difficulty, affliction and difficulty that has many deep realities. That as soon as you accept it, you're in the abode of shaitan. Who said it was going to be easy? Who, who said that you're not going to be tested with your life? with your family, with your wealth, with your possessions, قُلْ إِنَا الصَّلَاةِ وَالْنُسُوقِ وَأَحْمَا يَاهِيَ وَمَمَّاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That we're going to test you like those who came before you. You don't get a free ticket, you don't get a name and a maqam without having been tested. So the reality of that hadith that Prophet teaching, as soon as you accept it then prepare yourself for a life of affliction and difficulty. Poverty and affliction, poverty in the way that nothing compared to the people of dunya you'll have. Poverty in the way that you become faqir billahi ta'ala, that nothing of whatever you have is important within your heart. Allahu al Qani, Allah is the one whom is, is rich, Allah's wealth beyond imagination. That submitting to that heaven, the kingdom that, Ya Rabbi I'm in the territories of shayateen everywhere on this earth, not a place on this earth is not from that kingdom of shaitan. He has influence over every direction and every location. As soon as we enter onto this earth we have a life of affliction and difficulty. Unless you want to join shaitan and you make yourself like a painted cow, that's something different. Shaitan want only to humiliate insan and give them a temporary ease and then humiliate and destroy their reality. So it means our life is based on we are going to be tested with affliction, with every type of difficulty, every type of, of testing that comes into our life and immense reality of finding yourself your bulletproof outfit. If you know that that hadith is true and you know that affliction is everywhere, difficulty is everywhere, every type of testing, then prepare for yourself an outfit of immense rahmah and mercy. Means it's true, life is filled with difficulties. There's no need to email, why is this difficult, why is like this, why of course this is you came to the kingdom of heavens in the territories of shayateen and you think that they were going to just let you pass and every argument and every fight you're going to find a reason to allow yourself to have the satanic character, the satanic kingdom's character or do you rise up and say, I'm from a heavenly kingdom and my behaviour is different even to the point of being humiliated and to be effaced and to be brought down to nothing and you don't have what we have and you become nothing again. You don't look like what we are and you become nothing again and all of that is, is a part of this way and immense reality that Allah bring down everything and then the reminder that on yourself 
something of a bulletproof nature, means something of an immense dress, immense dress of protection and that immense dress of protection is giving to others. Feeding people, giving them food, giving them drink, giving them charity, all of that is a shield for the believer. All of that is an immense reality for the believer. That's why in these days of immense difficulty the, the wardrobe has to be even stronger. That the many awliyaullah's teaching that before you spend anything on yourself, spend in the way of Allah When someone was asked, uh, what should I do for this business and that business, make du'a for my business, and the only du'a for your business is you make an intention in your heart that from whatever you do it first goes to Allah then to yourself. These shaykhs and these awliyaullah before they bought a home for themselves they made a house for Allah All their life is a living example of that reality. The fact that they're pushing very hard for charity is so that everybody shares in this immense ni'mah, in this immense blessings. As if the shaykhs are handing out bulletproof shirts, infection-proof shirts, virus-proof shirts and wardrobe. The good deeds are what shields a servant from extreme hardships. The good deeds of, of taking from what Allah gave to us and to feed others. In a world where we don't think about food, we don't care if we put it and few pieces of it throw it away. There are places on this earth where the food is scarce and those pieces that you throw they would eat gladly and be full from that meal. You give your children to drink, they drink half and throw it away. And now when you see the pictures of the drinking and the water they don't even have water, they look like they haven't showered in weeks and they don't have access to water. And as life becomes more and more difficult just the simple act of a cup of water to somebody, not to all the wealthy people sitting on the carpet but to the outside people who are in difficulty. It doesn't mean go to each other, give each other styrofoam cups of water, it is the, those are people who are full, their belly full that's the feeding them a kebab is of no value. But to give the water and to give the help to people who are in need, people who are on the street, people who are in difficulty, this is an armor for ourselves. You're not doing it for anyone else but you're doing it for yourself, your family and your children and community that Allah will shield the believer from every type of difficulty, every type of sickness, every type of hardship and harm. And that becomes a suit of protection that all awliyaullah have taught all their lives. They were taught that way from the, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad through the living example of the Ashab al-Kiram, the great companions of Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt whom all faqeer, all live that example. They gave everything and then they gave their own lives. They didn't send other people to battle, they didn't send women and children, they gave their own lives and slaughtered everywhere because they were the living example, the living example of living a life of service. So when we see all these difficulties, see all these hardships then this is a sign for us that prepare your armour. Prepare your spiritual armour, prepare yourself for immense difficulties that all around us and everything we do is a shield. Your character is the immense shield, it's the character of your good heart, good talk, good patience. It puts an energy of, of protection all around you. Many, many hadiths we don't even have to go through all of them that the beloved Companion of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq was sitting with Sayyidina Muhammad and a person came up and began to yell at him and say bad things to the holy Siddiq, Siddiq al-Mutlaq. If you think you're special and anyone thinks that they're special and the great Siddiq 
sitting in the companionship of Sayyidina Muhammad the man was cursing and yelling and yelling. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was looking and then looking at Prophet and Prophet was smiling, was smiling and smiling. Uh, he had enough, he turned around and began to say something to the man. And give a jawab, give an answer back. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq tried to give an answer back. Immediately Prophet got up and walked away. In our life, this is an example of keeping companionship with Siddiq. The Siddiq al Mutlaq is our example, especially for Naqshbandiyoon. This is our father, our grandfather of our way. As soon as Prophet walked out, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq ran after Sayyidina Muhammad He said, Ya Rasul Kareem what happened? When he was attacking you I saw you were okay, you were smiling, everything was okay. As soon as I opened my mouth you walked away. Says, as he was attacking angels were dressing you and blessing you. As soon as you wanted to answer the angels left then the energies of negativity were beginning to appear and I can't stay in the presence of negativity. Which is not even something he probably was just whispering nicely back, doesn't have a character like us humans. These are the great companions of Allah of, of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah's Habib. If that gentleness brought that type of badness and, and that type of reaction from Sayyidina Muhammad then imagine what Prophet is asking from us, that with your goodness angels are dressing you. If you think you've been wronged and you, you're capable of staying quiet, Allah will dress you, angels will dress you. If something was said to you inappropriate and you're capable of keeping your tongue, angels will be dressing you. This is how Allah gives His ni'mah to the servant, not by giving him a raise at work. Allah's ni'mah comes from difficulties. When they can endure the difficulties, these are the blessings of Allah dressing upon the servant. And as soon as the servant wants to open their mouth and begin to lash out, that blessing went and now you are in a companionship of difficulty. So imagine when shaitan knows all the harm that is around us, all the demons that are around us and he says, what if this servant has this protection and this bubble of light all around them? His job is to destroy that, it's just common sense. He's not going to look at you and say, oh that's mashal, that's very nice, look at that how this guy has this protection or this lady has this protection. His job is to destroy that, make sure that the protection drops and the ifrit and the shayateen enter. They enter onto the person, they enter into the heart of the person, they enter into the home of the person because that person now becomes like a Trojan horse of shayateen. The shaitan enters to them and now into the home and into the atmosphere. And that's all they wanted, this is all that they, they wanted of these difficulties. Now you say that they survived COVID and now a black fungus is growing within them. People who survived COVID now they're finding all sorts of different sicknesses, you know the black fungus entering into them. There are things that people can't even imagine are on this earth. And all that they're asking is to shield ourselves with good deeds, good actions, good amal and then our good character inside, good heart, good tongue and that that protection to be a source of immense blessings for us to keep the holy companionship. What's the purpose of trying to learn how to meditate, how to do all of these practices and that Prophet walk away from us, oh what kind of crazy people yelling, screaming, shouting, what is this? Your companionship won't last but a second. The tariqahs are based on adab for the reason of why? Because they're the, they're, they keep the companionship and muhabbat and love of Sayyidina Muhammad The only thing important for them to teach is adab, is that be careful because the proximity of which you're entering in is very holy and keep the holy character because of that companionship. 
When you begin to get angry and begin to lose your character, even the shaykh has to walk away from you because the shaykh wants to keep the company of Prophet and not the company of shaitan. He doesn't sit with the, the shaitans and say, well I'm going to choose which direction. So even the shaykh's nazar and the shaykh's uh, tajalli will part from that servant. So these are, these are advices for the Ahlul Tafakkur and advice always for myself that immense lights in shawwal, immense blessings in shawwal, it's not imaginable. That's why his servants are not feeling anything. That's the time that you're going to be caught off guard when you're not feeling anything and still do what you have to do, still pass the test with good character and a good example inshaAllah. So that Allah complete His ni'mat and that ni'matullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to dress us and bless us inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, Nasiri Surat al-Fatiha.